how insanely difficult a task is it when they email you to say, hey, talk about one of your heroes? Because then it's like, but there's a million people I could talk about and I'm gonna feel bad. Anyone I don't talk about, I'm gonna feel bad. So I'm probably gonna cheat and throw in a few extra little ones. But I have one core one and I'll start with that because I know they're probably getting ready to go with the graphics and everything. So um, it's probably not gonna surprise a lot of people if you've been following this whole thing. Uh, but the person I chose to focus on, doesn't mean it's the biggest hero ever. I have other ones in the family and stuff. I don't want you to think I don't care about my family, is Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She is my hero for a number of reasons that I've probably gone on at at length, ad nauseum. Um, but but she's my she's my hero not only because she possesses characteristics that I wish that I had and that constantly seeing her makes me want to work towards, like um, being able to succinctly and and powerfully um, you know, sort of give an idea of what your values are and what policies we can employ to you know, make them the law of the land to move our country to the place it needs to be. She's the best at doing that. She doesn't back down from a fight. She defends herself. Um, when she defends herself, she makes the people attacking her wish that they had never put her name in their mouth. Um, like one of the best things about her, like we, we've we've had good progressives, but having a progressive in elected office that is constantly attacked in like political articles, but almost always by anonymous sources. Like whether it's a, an anonymous source around Trump or an anonymous source high up in the DNC, they don't want to go on record as having attacked her because they're scared. They're scared of how she'll respond as best as anyone, but also with the the sheer power and vigor of the movement behind her, especially online. And and I like that. She's like she's confident. She's unrepentant. She doesn't back down. She stands for her values, and she is a juggernaut. And also. She got elected doing that, which not a lot of people have. There are other people who have these those sorts of qualities, but she ran and got elected, and now for two years or so, she's been there doing it. And so, she's also my hero because in a time where the 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 part of the pie chart that is good news or news that makes you happy, it feels like it's shrinking all the time. She has generated the lion's share of that slice, I think, um, in making sure that. American political conversation is centered around the most important, most impactful issues like the Green New Deal. Um, I mean, that by itself would have made uh, her my hero. But also the fact that she doesn't wait her turn. She doesn't wait in line. She didn't get elected to sit in the back bench for 12 years and then probably just end up turning to someone who's aiming to become a lobbyist someday. Like she came out the gate swinging even before she was inaugurated. For all of that and more, and maybe we'll go into it. Um, she, she is my hero uh, insofar as my career and, and something keeping me going and giving me hope for the future, uh, AOC is the one. Okay, so I love that story because uh, it's a little bit of a turnaround of the same theme we've been telling. Which is, you know, when I talked about uh, one of the guys who helped me out and, uh, and was a guardian angel kind of for me, Kevin Straley, who helped me in my radio career, uh, I, you know, told people at the end, Make sure you help somebody because um, you know you never know. Uh, and to be a decent person and see see, see how it turns out. Uh, well, he helped me because he was my hero. But in this story, I remember a couple of years ago when AOC wanted to be on your show, John, uh, mm-hmm. and and you helped <laughs> her, and then she became your hero. Uh, and so that's a great story too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She didn't need me, by the way, but but it was nice to be part of it. She would have been just fine. But that is, yeah. I, I get what you're saying. No, but guys, look, I, I I don't want people thinking that way, right? I, I hear what you're saying, uh, mm-hmm. but you know, um, I don't know that I needed Mrs. Rosenberg to move me up in, in <laughs> reading class, right? I don't know that if I could have. I couldn't have done it without Kevin Straley or anybody else I'm gonna mention today. But I love that they helped me anyway, <laughs> that's the whole point, right? And so it doesn't take any accomplishment away from anyone if you help them. Yeah, <laughs> It's yeah. still their accomplishment and it's still, you know, they're still wonderful for doing it. But I also want people to know everybody does this together. I mean, if, if there is a theme at all to, to today's broadcast, it is most certainly that no one does it alone. And 
you know, in building the Young Turks, we've not only had all of you, literally hundreds of thousands of people who have donated at one time or another, or who are members, or just even in in helpful advice online. And yes, that actually does exist. Uh, and but also people in, in our lives who helped make the Young Turks possible. One day, if the press ever gives us positive attention, <laughs> mm-hmm. they might say, uh, because they do needless hero worship. Whereas we're trying to celebrate real people for the real wonderful things they've done uh, in our lives and in their lives. But it, when the press gets a hold of somebody, then they turn them into like this uber mensch. Like, and, and one day they might say, although I doubt it, but <laughs> Oh my God, Jake Uger built this all by himself. No, that is not remotely true. So no one ever builds anything by themselves. We all do it together. And I don't care how hackneyed or cliched you think it is. It's absolutely true and you need to understand that. And by the way, it also informs policy.